The Shannon is beautiful. It's disgusting. It is so easy. It is the most challenging thing I've ever done. It is sunny and bright, and it is horizontal rain. There's waves. That's life. The challenge today, I'd say, very choppy water, a lot of wind. You can get a wink of sleep on a knacker toy. Probably two hours of hard work. <laughs> I could have done with an extra hour of sleep. Not, not too tight. The wind's pushing you back, you're paddling forward, so it's slow going, you gotta keep your head down, it's a hard workout. We're burning about 5,000, 6,000 calories a day, and we're eating about probably half that. So by the time we get to Karen Tool, we'll have no energy left. We need to get a bit more copped on. It's half the Shannon here, the lockery in the air. Uh, be quiet. 58 kilometers, we had sun, rain, wind in front, wind behind. I never thought that fucking lake would end. I think I'm seasick. <laughs> See you, Limerick, very soon. Even in the smallest of kids, they're coming in and it's the pain in the tummy. I have a pain in my tummy. Generally, it's anxiety. What we find as teachers is that we're not suitably qualified to diagnose that this is anxiety. It's a worry of some description that they can only verbalise as, I have a pain in my tummy. I fundamentally believed all my life that my happiness lay in achievement. And I felt more profoundly lost every time I did. What I've learned at 43 is that my happiness does not lie in achievement, it lies in connection. The things that make me happy are the things that culture is slowly diminishing and throwing away. And kids are at the brunt of that. Loneliness is teenagers, it's new mums, it's people who leave one area and go to school in another area. Loneliness is corrosive. It's the equivalent of 15 cigarettes a day and shortens your lifespan by three years. So what is it doing to children? To say it's okay not to be okay, but to not follow up with actually, well, how? How do I feel safe in this moment where I don't feel safe in my body? So imagine how it feels for young people without the skills to navigate that. Yes, I'm really positive that mental health's been talked about, but I'm cautious that we're going to go down a, a different road, and that different road will be everybody has a disorder. Everybody is sick. I'm concerned about that. Unless we get a little bit more political, a little edgier here, doesn't mean we have to throw stones at politicians and get angry with them, but they're terrified of this because they don't know the answer. We finished the first phase, which is the 300 kilometer paddle of the Shannon over six days. We're finished, I never want to see a kayak again. Let's move on. The minute we decide to get on this bike, it's that wind. It's right into our face the whole way, it's very windy. We're trying to get going as on time as we can at seven o'clock. Kayaking, cycling, things I'm never doing again. It's going to be a tough day. They've totally underestimated it. We're only 6 at the end now. Rise up, rise up! Anything over 100 kilometres is admirable for people that haven't cycled. So to do 160, unbelievable. That was one hell of a cycle. I ain't doing that again. Pure stubbornness. He carried on. That's why I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an immense week, and now let's send it home. Day two, day three on the kayak was nuts. Getting through the cycle yesterday, regardless of what you face here now, you've already achieved something unbelievable. What you did today will get this to 30, 40, 50,000 students. Although we've done something very special, you've actually done something that's going to affect a lot of young people. This will be in every school in Ireland in two years' time because of this. I thought I'd never see another fucking river. Ahead of us now is the steep devil's ladder. We'll have to be cautious going up there. Your programme like Lost for Life, they're very much giving the tools at an early age that children can verbalise where they're at, not what should she be doing. It's where is she at and where can we take her to? People think it's a programme for managing anxiety and stress in children. But the actually programme is about building well-being and resilience in children. It's getting in there before it gets blown up into an actual issue. Young people have a right to have psychological distress. What we also need to learn is how to contain that. We don't have to fix it. We just need to learn how to contain big emotions in young people and allow the full range of emotion so that they can feel safe in their bodies like the programmes are doing. Well, that's how we do it. We're hearing from parents who are telling us that not only are their children recognising and putting words to their emotions, but they now, as a result of the programme, have developed skills and tools to manage those emotions. I fundamentally believe early prevention will 
massively changed the trajectory of our mental health system. Starting really early, I suppose, is, is really important to help children really start to think about their feelings, why they're feeling a certain way, what can help them work through those feelings. And also, it'll help them to understand that every feeling is okay, but it's how you then help yourself work through that feeling and process it that we teach them in the programme. I truly believe that by having these programmes available to schools, we are massively impacting on children's mental health as they get older, because their brains are like sponges for this stuff. We gotta help children. We gotta do it now. We gotta stop theorizing. We gotta get our priorities straight here now. Education's the most important part of our society, not health, education. We'll do it the right way, and that's what a Lust for Life wants to do. The next time you find yourself in the company of a problem admiration society in your local town that's given out about the fact that we're all doomed, tell them to shut up. We have great people in our country and these people are a fantastic representation of this.